Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're taking a look at the very first Thomas DVD for 2016, Start Your Engines. So this was put out on two digital platforms first on February 16th of 2016. Uh, we just had its anniversary a little while ago, so that's pretty cool. And then it came out on to DVD in the US on March 1st of 2016. And yeah, that's pretty much it. The original version did come with a slipcover, but I got mine from eBay and it didn't come with one, so that's unfortunate. I would really like to have one though because that slipcover is really cool. But anyways, let's take a look at the actual release here. So we got the Thomas logo, really cool logo here. I keep saying that, but the logos are really cool on these newer releases. We got Thomas, Philip, James going under a signal there. I don't know where they are. It's not that for Junction because... Napford Junction doesn't have all these trees and hills everywhere, so I don't know where they are. But it's a cool cover. I like it. Pretty snazzy. Here's the sign. I like the shade of blue. Sorry, I gotta get closer to the mic. I apologize. Yeah, I really like that shade of blue. All your standard stuff. Here's the back. High Speed Railway Adventure. It should say Adventures, because there are more than one Adventures on here, but whatever. Um, there's like dead space here. Um, the description is quite small, so I feel like you could have formatted it a little better, like make it go around the barcode here, like make the text bigger, but I don't know. And this image is also kind of strangely formatted as well. Like just move the image up a little bit. I think it'd look a lot better. But we got Thomas and James at Wellsworth Station. There are a couple of copy and pasted humans around the place, but there are a ton like it's insane there's confetti everywhere and it just looks very exciting and i love this little frame mr topham hat here i believe this is taken from henry spots trouble and it's absolutely hilarious i don't know it's just really funny to me then the bonus features i'll race with you music video on a journey with you music video go go thomas music video and guess who puzzles and here is the disc itself Cool. Alrighty. So what episodes do we have on here? So we have Two Wheels Good, S excuse me, um, Reds vs. Blues, Slow Steven, the little engine who raced ahead, Best Engine Ever, and Philip to the Rescue. And then our bonus features are Calling Out Engines, where Sir Topham Hatch shots out Bill, Ben, and Marion. We have two Earl's Quiz segments. Um, he quizzes us on the Lost Puff, Percy's Lucky Day, and um, he asks what color Henry is. And the other Earl's Quiz segment, um, he, feature, or he quizzes us on Percy's Parcel and Pop Goes Thomas. We have, let's see here, the Landmarks of Sodor. Um, this time they cover the Waste Dump and the Scrapyard. And then we have Sir Topham Hatt's Tales, where he talks about Cranky and recovers the or recaps the events of Kevin's Cranky Friend. Interestingly, no Mr. Perkins segments. I think this is probably the first DVD since 2010 not to feature it. When I say DVD, I mean episode DVD, not the specials. But it's strange. He's nowhere to be found, which is kind of sad because I love those segments. And they're just very wholesome. And they add a nice breakup to... Just all Thomas stuff. But anyways, let's go through the episodes here. So Two Wheels Good, um, a very good story here. Um, Lee Pressman wrote this episode, and he also wrote um, Spencer's, inter Spencer's introductory episode, excuse me, from season seven. So I think it's kind of cool how he's writing another Spencer episode all these years later. I find it crazy how a lot of the older writers from the model series, like season six, season seven, are still writing for the show. Um, I really like how the Duke and Duchess are the main characters of this episode. We hardly ever see humans, um, leading a story, let alone these two, but it's really cool to see it here. Um, I find it interesting how Lord Callan was the only returning character this season. You would have thought that maybe, like, a road vehicle or someone a bit more significant would return, but no. The season is very much focused on the more popular CGI characters, like... The Steam Team, the Diesels, um, Hero, Victor, you know, the Miller characters. And then you also get a nice um, balance of the classic characters like Bill and Ben, a little bit of Duck, a little bit of Oliver, you get Toad. Yeah, so it's a pretty good mix. 
Um, I don't have many more points about the story. I mean, it's it's really fine. Um, nothing groundbreaking, but it's still a really cool concept, and I think it was executed very well. I'll give it an 8 out of 10. Alrighty, Reds versus Blues. It's not often that we actually get a sports-themed episode in Thomas, but I always enjoy when the show um, gives us something new. They also do a good job at teaching us new things, and... I know these episodes are tar- targeted towards younger kids, but I had never known at the time when this came out in 2015, 2016, I never knew what a red and a yellow card meant in soccer, so it was cool to learn that. Yeah, I am not a sports person. I don't really know a whole lot about this. And I also want to say that I live in the U.S., so I'm going to be referring to football as soccer. Um, the scene where Sir Topham Heck kicks the ball into the window is absolutely hilarious. And then all the workmen just, like, walk casually away. That's really, really funny. I know it's kind of cliche humor, like, very kitty, but we need more diverse comedy in Thomas instead of those, like, eight or so seasons from the Miller era for, or not the Miller era, from the Hit Entertainment era, season eight, nine-ish, to like season 16. Oh, no humor at all. Um, this is a minor thing, but I absolutely adore how they call Barrow, um, Barrow and refer to it by name. That's an actual place in England. Um, they could have easily said the mainland, but to reassure that Thomas is a British show and that Sodor is located off the coast of England, they name dropped the city, and I really appreciate that. Um, I really like the scenes of James and Thomas collecting the fans and racing each other. There's not a whole lot of narration in those scenes, and they're totally re- totally reliant on the music and visuals. We need more show don't tell in Thomas because when they do a great job at showing, it's great. <laughs> that was poorly phrased, but whatever. Um, one of my only major gripes with this episode is the fact that the soccer players are the last people to arrive. Like I said earlier, I don't know a whole lot about sports, let alone soccer, but wouldn't they have gotten there a lot sooner to have time to practice, like maybe a couple hours or so? I don't know. Um, And then I love Percy's fourth wall break. Uh, It's just really, really funny. Yeah, another fun story. Um, The plot is very basic, but it's fun in execution. I'll give it a 7 out of 10. All right, Slow Steven. This is an absolutely wonderful episode. I love this one. Um, I really like the fall atmosphere in this episode. Sodor always looks really pretty around this time of year. Um, I love Thomas's savage burn at James when they're at Nafford Station and the passengers are all taking pictures of Stephen and James is like, honestly, why are they taking pictures of you? Why can't they take pictures of me? And then Thomas is like, you're just jealous because they're not taking pictures of you, James. I don't know, something like that, but it's really, really funny. Um, The action and suspense is really, really well done. Um, I'm not lying when I said that I had goosebumps the entire time Stephen was trying to cross the bridge. The music, the direction, the sound effects, everything. Oh, it was very well done. Um, The scene where the bridge is collapsing is also very intense. I like that. This whole episode and really just specifically the ending feel very classic Thomas slash, slash railway series. So I wrote down on my notes, and I did not mean to read the, read the slash, but especially when the narrator says the engines had to cross the bridge very slowly. That's plucked right out of Better Late Than Never, right out of season two. That just feels so classic to me, especially just the entire, like, ending, you know, like I said. So yeah, an absolutely wonderful episode. One of the best from the entire CGI series. The action's great, the music is suspenseful, and the choice to use Steven was a great one. I'm going to give it a 9.5 out of 10. The only reason it's not a 10 is because I feel like Stephen going from the castle to the station to the docks, going back and forth is a bit repetitive to me. But other than that, near perfection. Alrighty, we got the little engine who raced ahead. So I don't know what it is, but (laughs) I find Percy's joke about the banana to be absolutely hilarious. It's so random. So it's kind of like stupid humor, but I like it. It's really funny. Um, I think this is this is as good as time as ever to give my thoughts on Philip. I hope I'm not in the minority when I say this, but I find him very annoying. Yes, it is really cool how he reflects Thomas when he came to the island and how Thomas acts like a mentor to him in this episode, but 
He talks so quickly, loudly, and annoyingly that I just can't stand him. He gets really bad in later seasons, like season 21 especially. He gets very annoying. Phillip's number, I think that's what it's called. Ugh, terrible episode. Yeah, I don't have much to say about this episode. I really like how filler, filler, how Philip mirrors early Thomas and how he interacts with um, the two most influential engines to him, those being Gordon and Edward. And it seems like the team had really good intentions when creating Philip, but in execution, he comes off as extremely annoying, especially in later seasons, like I said earlier. I'll give it another 7 out of 10. Like I said, it's not a bad episode, but it's just not one of my favorites. Alrighty, best engine ever. I love how we got an episode where two females take the lead. It gets a bit more common in the later seasons, but for this period of the show is very, very rare. Emily and Caitlin have really good chemistry together. They really feel like best friends. I want to see more stories with them. They they bounce off each other very well. Um, this episode also passes the Bechdel test. For those unaware, that means that two females have to have a conversation with each other without referring to a male or having a male present. Um, speaking of the female like interaction in this episode, there's a scene that could have totally been completely female-driven. Um, Emily meets Thomas and Marion in the shunting yard around the middle of the episode. Now, I think it would have been really, really cool if instead of Thomas, it was like Rosie or, I don't know, Mavis, maybe? That would have been so, so cool. I love Rosie on uh, later seasons. I love Mavis. I love these female characters. They're so well done. I want to see more of them. Um, I want to take this time to rant about the merch now. So if you're not a big merch fan or you're not as familiar with the Thomas Wooden Railway line especially, um, you're probably not going to get it, but I'm going to rant anyways. So Mattel is infamously known for not making vital characters in Wooden Railway, for example. They haven't made Toad, Duncan, Donald and Douglas, Daisy, Rex, regular versions of Bill and Ben, Slip Coaches, more diverse troublesome trucks... Um, express coaches, stuff like that. Yet they go and make Streamlined Emily, which appeared for barely five seconds. They just took this toy right here, painted her green, gave her a new face, and they're like, bam, that's a toy right there. I don't understand. I don't know who came up with that decision, but I hope they're out of a job now. (laughs) I'm just kidding. But it's such a dumb toy. It's just, ugh. I wouldn't be too mad about um, this toy if Mattel hadn't made those other characters, but they spent the time and the money making this pointless shit when they could have devoted all of these resources to making like a really hot version of Duncan or Daisy. Like Mattel, these characters will sell. I would have bought the shit out of a new Donald and Douglas. I would have bought ten of those. New version of Toad, but I would have bought twenty of them. You cannot have Oliver without Toad. Harvey as well. Harvey's a great character. You haven't made him, but you make Duck? No one likes Duck. I'm just kidding. Everyone loves Duck. And you're going to make the two um, small railway engines. You're not going to make Rex? What? What is wrong with you? But yeah, um, <laughs> let's get away from that. This also has a really cool action scene. I love runaway trains, and this one is really intense. Really, like, tight, kind of scary shots, but it's just very well done. So yeah, another really great episode. I'll give it a 8.5 out of 10. Probably one of the most popular from season 19, if I remember correctly. Alrighty, and then our last episode here, Philip to the Rescue. Um, Again, not much to say about it. Everybody remembers it from the crash, but the story overall is pretty simple. Um, I really like the scene of James preparing his long line of trucks. That's really cool. Um, The music and the just no narration or voice acting is just very cool. Um, the Runaway is also very cool. Um, I say very cool and cool a lot, but it's cool. Thomas is cool. I love how violent the crash feels. Like, you again, like the adventure begins, you get these really tight, close shots, and it just, you feel it. Like, there are times where you just feel a Thomas crash, and you feel this one. We need more intense accidents in Thomas, and this season did a really good job at kind of kickstarting that. We had this, we had Heroes Crash, there's probably one more that I'm missing. 
Oh, the Steven crash or the bridge collapse. Oh, there's probably one more that I'm missing. I can't think of it right now. Oh, there was the other side of the mountain one with Thomas where he crashes off the tracks. There's probably more, but yeah, very intense accidents. Um, the story does parallel um Thomas's story where he saved James. Again, going back on the points that I made earlier about Philip basically being Thomas, but Philip did save James and Thomas saved James. So I hope that was intentional, but if it wasn't, good on the team for being good writers. Um, the only thing I'm not crazy about this episode is how James keeps regressing into this sel- blah, 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 into this selfish, vain asshole. I know that's what he's known for, but when a character arc happens, I expect it to stick to some degree. I have written down a 6.5, but I think I'll go back up to a 7. Um, it's really kind of like, eh, do I want to watch this again? The story is kind of like, eh, but everybody watches it because of the crash, and the crash is really cool. But yeah, so if we want to reorder the episodes, they would go Slow Steven, Two Wheels Good, Reds vs. Blues, Best Engine Ever, Little Engine That Could. That's not what it's called, The Little Engine That Raced It, <laughs> and then Philip to the Rescue. So yeah, um, this release is actually really, really good. Um, I want to talk about how I got it briefly after this, but I enjoy this release. All these episodes are all pretty good. I remember not being crazy about it, like when these episodes came out, but rewatching it for um, Thomas at Home, I enjoyed it a lot. Very fun. So I want to briefly talk about how I got this. This is a very special DVD to me. Back in, like, September or so, I bought, like, 11 Thomas DVDs that I didn't have. And you probably remember me talking about this, but, um, I got, let's see, Thomas in Charge, Engine Friends, Muddy Matters, Sticky Situations, um, Engines to the Rescue and that double pack with Tale of the Brave, and Tales on the Rails, and Christmas on Sodor. And I had bought, um, Star Your Engines from the same seller as Tales on the Rails, However, for some reason, uh, when the package arrived, it wasn't in there. Um, the seller had refunded me like a little bit of money. I was like, "Oh, that's cool. They're gonna shave on, or they're gonna combine shipping and save me some money. So that's cool." But I was like, oh, "There's only one DVD in here." So I contacted the seller and I'm like, "Oh, this so little while ago, we forgot to take the listing down, which is." Interesting, because eBay usually automatically takes on the listing once it sells, so I don't know what was going on there. It was really both of our faults. Like, I should have guessed that's what happened when they refunded me my money, but they should have just taken down the listing in the first place, but whatever. So I didn't actually get the DVD until probably a week ago recording this. I just didn't really have the time, and I just decided to get it now. So I apologize Sorry, you can see that Tops doesn't have a buffer there. Sorry, I only have... Oh, you can't see Emily doesn't have one either. I only have four wooden railway buffers, and there are six tracks here, so I gotta kinda do some clever camera tricks. But anyways, this is a very special DVD because it was the final DVD that I needed for my collection. Um, not counting multi-packs like Thomas's Holiday Collection... Or things like the take-along DVDs or samplers. I don't really collect those. But in terms of mainstream Thomas DVDs, I have every single one now. Which is a very satisfying feeling. I remember being very happy when I finally got this. I wish I had a slipcover, but I don't care either way. Alrighty, so that's all for this episode here. And guys, we only have a month's worth of episodes left. We have... Um, Tinsel on the Tracks, Ultimate Friendship Adventures, Extraordinary Engines, and Christmas on Sodor. Then after that, we are done. So, I'm getting a little worried, but don't worry, I do have a plan. I've been teasing this for the last few episodes, but I do have a plan for this series. I'm not going to get too into it right now, but it's going to be pretty fun. But yeah, um, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you later. Sorry, I don't know what that was. I apologize.